Good morning. morning. For those of you who don't know who I am, um, I'm Pastor Rick Hwaimey. I am a retired pastor. I've been retired three years and I never get tired of saying that. (laughs) But anyway, uh, my wife and I live uh, in Painesville and we've been with you quite a few times through the last couple of years, or I have been. And um, it's, it's good to be with you. Pastor Anthony is on vacation, and somebody said they're expecting a baby? No, they're expecting a baby. But that has nothing to do with today. He's at his nephew's baptism. He's at his nephew's baptism. Okay, yeah. So just so the rumors don't get started, because this was booked a long time ago. Anyway, um, so thank you for letting me be with you today, and it is good to be here. And um, I think that's it. So let us prepare for worship by confessing our sins and hearing the promise of forgiveness. Please stand. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our gathering song.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. Our Lord Jesus, you have endured the doubts and foolish questions of every generation. Forgive us for trying to be judge over you and grant us the confident faith to acknowledge you as Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Genesis 2, verses 18 through 24. A reading from Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this, is last, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. The word of the Lord. The second reading was from Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and chapter 2, verses 5 through 12. A reading from Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he made purifications for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which he, we were speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere. What are human beings that you are mindful of them or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this moment, if there are any children that want to come forward to our children's message, you will be greatly received, and I will be glad that you are here. If not, come on forward. If not, I'll speak to the big kids out here because they're smart. Oh, I forgot my words that I need a little bit of assistance with. First off, I want you big kids out there and all of us, we're going to use our imaginations. You all have a building block, right? You got your building block? Great. And together we're going to create a house. But first, I'm just going to put my building block down here. There it is, a house. Isn't it great? Isn't it wonderful? Someone tell me. 
What, what, what are you thinking? My single little block does not make a house? No, it doesn't. You're right. You guys are smart. So I need all of your building blocks to help make a house. Okay? So now we've created this great big grand house with all of our building blocks together. Now you guys are smart and I know you've played with building blocks before because they've been around since the dinosaurs so you, you've, all, you've all played with blocks. What happens if I take one out from down here? I take out that building block and what happens? Our house falls. Right. We need each and every single building block to create our house. Now keep that picture in your brain. In our Bible story this morning, Jesus is reminding us that we all need each other and how we treat each other matters. No one person is more or less important and we need to make sure that we're taking care of each another so that we can be our whole house. And what happens when we tell that someone that we don't want them to be around anymore? We take them out of our house. What happens? Yeah, that's right. The house falls down, right? We're not whole, and we need them. In our story from Genesis that we read, God created us to work together, not to be separate blocks doing our own little thing in one little building, Jesus says that God thinks that we are all important, no matter how big or how small. And so we treat each other how God would treat us. Treat us. What are some ways that we can show people that they matter to us, and they matter to God, and that they are not alone? What kind of things in your life can you do to show others that they matter to you? You guys each have your own ways of sharing God's love and God's light with others so that they know that God cares for them. We have so many ways to show God's love for everyone. And remember, you are not your own building block. We are a beautiful house constructed together. Find your attitudes of prayer and we will pray. Dear God, Thank you for creating animals, plants, and all people. Thank you for never leaving us alone, but being with us always. We want to love everyone as you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. And because we cannot go without a children's blessing, and I don't have any friends up here, I will just do it myself. So remember when we're done with the blessing, we all say amen. So God cares for you. Amen. Please stand. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Some Pharisees came and to test Jesus, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. <clears throat> but Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, 
and the two shall become one flesh, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter, and he said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. A people were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. When I was serving in parish, uh, there's a church called Central Lutheran Church in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. And I was the pastor there for 13 years. And one of the ways that we often began worship, especially we had, um, we had two services on Sunday and one on Wednesday, and the second one on Sunday and the one on Wednesday, we often began this as sort of a, a, a very, very brief order of confession and forgiveness, um, a little different. And it, it, it started off like this, and, and if you know the response to what I'm going to say, uh, just, just say it. If you don't know it, that's okay. It's not a big deal. God is good all the time. Yeah, say, so we're going to do that together. God is good all the time. We're going to do it one more time so it gets in your head. God is good all the time. But then, remember, this is a, a confession of, of, of forgiveness. We would follow that. And, and the first one, by the way, we, we stole that from somebody else. But the second one, we made this one up, right? So we go, God is good all the time. And then the second one is, and I'm going to say my part, then you say whatever you want, right? Because I, I don't know what's going on in your life. So I go, God is good all the time. Then we go, and we are good. Okay, your response can really vary there. Now, if, if you know, if, if you're... If you're 16 years old and male, it's basically, and, and we are good none of the time. And, um, and, you know, on a continuum from none of the time, I, I think the predominant thing I heard was most of the time, which is probably not true. But, and what we kind of adopted was, so here you got none of the time, here you got most of the time, and we would go some of the time. Now, what was interesting is how people said those words. And we didn't teach this part. It was, we go, God is good. People go, all the time. We are good. Some of the time. Because we know that. And we, we know that's not how it's supposed to be, but it just is. It's, it's how it is. It's like no matter how hard we try, we're never good all the time. It, it, it's, and you can create all sorts of theological treatises for that, from the book of Genesis to, you know, where, where God creates Adam, and then out of Adam, God creates Eve, and, and everything's great, but we know it's just going to fall apart. And, and it's, it's all Eve's fault, but we won't go there either. <laughs> to, to this, by the way, uh, uh, your pastor being gone today has nothing to do with his nephew's baptism. It's just no pastor wants to preach on the Sunday where the divorce thing comes up. <laughs> <laughs> just telling you, you got a really smart pastor. <laughs> It, you know, because we, we hear this, and, and 
It's like there's things that, that are, you do and there's things you don't do. And there's things, if, if you do them, you, you get hurt. And it, it's just, it's the way it is. By the way, how many of you have a marriage or a marriage in your family, your parents' marriage, your kids' marriage, which is good some of the time? Raise your hand. What, was yours, is yours good all the time? No, of course not, right? Okay. Yeah. So we get this. and We're not going to go there. We're going to go to a different place. There are rules in our lives that are, are given to us to keep us safe, to make our lives better than they would be if we choose, for whatever reason, to not follow those rules. Now, Martin Luther would call that, the, it's called the first and second use of the law, that Lutherans talk about law and gospel. And that there's two uses of the law. The first use of the law is, is to keep us safe. Okay? Don't play in the street, we say to our kids. Okay? And the Bible's full of those things. First use of the law is to keep us safe. To keep us from getting hurt. The second use of the law is, is, to, is to drive us to the foot of the cross. Which is when we say we are good some of the time. We, we're not good all the time. I'm not good all the time, and I need to be forgiven, and I need to be saved. Where Christians get this messed up is they add a third use of the law, which is, if you do these things, you're a better Christian than people who don't do these things. Or, if you don't do these things that God said you're going to do, you're going to go to hell. And then we use that third use of the law to judge all sorts of other people but we're usually most, most judgmental to ourselves. And the genius of Martin Luther was, he goes, that does not work. Because if we have a third use of the law, Jesus serves no purpose. Because God sent his son into the world so that we might know about something called grace. Grace. And grace is getting what we don't deserve. All right. The law is a good thing. I, I grew up, I'm the youngest of four boys. No girls. Okay, I, I, I like to talk about this. So I got, you know, God's sense of humor was I get married and I have two daughters and I've led most of my adult life clueless about the people around me. And, and I, I have good parents I was the baby of, of the four, so they'd kind of figured it out by the time I came along. And, and like any good parents is, you spend a good deal of your time, especially when your children are smaller, teaching them the law. This is right, this is wrong. When you do things that are right, good things happen. When you do things that are wrong, bad things that are happen. But you also teach them, when you do things that are wrong, bad things are going to happen, but we're still going to love you. That's like parenting 101. Right? Now, my, my mom was, was sort of the, 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 the rule teacher in our family. My dad was a teacher, but it's like I don't remember him much because he was working all the time. And mom was a stay-at-home mom. And, and they just, you just remember some of the rules that your parents taught you. And, and one of the rules was, now, um, so we've got a couple kids in here. They're not going to understand part of what I'm talking about, but... Uh, we'll, we'll teach you, is, uh, you know, this is, most, most of us in this room grew up in a time where there were no uh, childproof locks in cars, right? You know, so you're going down the road at 60 miles an hour, and you, you, you pull up on the door handle, what happens? The door opens up, right? Well, you don't do that, right? This, this is the law. The purpose of the law is to keep us safe. And so my mom used to teach us this thing, is that when you're in the car, don't mess with the door handles. I don't think that's very complicated, except when you're three years old. 
So I, I remember this very clearly at the time. I grew up in northwestern Wisconsin, but I was born and spent my first five years down the southwest corner of Minnesota. We lived in a little town called Jasper. And, 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 and the big town was Pipestone, 11 miles away. And for some reason, my mom's mom and dad, my grandma and grandpa Nelson, had come from Wisconsin to visit us. And my grandpa had a, 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 a black mercury, probably about a 1952 mercury. Ugly car. <laughs> it, it, was, it was black and it looked like a June bug. And, uh, but one of the things it was notable for was it had suicide doors. Now, do you know what suicide doors are? No, I didn't think you did. That's what I got to teach you. Suicide doors are all of our car doors open to the front, right? You want to get out of the car, you lift the thing and you push the door to the front. Suicide doors, you open them up and they go to the back. Now, why are they called suicide doors? Well, so my mom would teach us is that, you know, it, you don't mess with the car doors. Now, she was a really, really good mom because she not only taught us the law, but she taught us the ramifications of when you break the law. So that's a big word, but we'll get to what that means. So she said, because, you know, if, if you play with the car doors and you fall out of the car, this is what every loving mother and father always say we're not going to come back and get you. <laughs> right? God is good all the time. We're good some of the time. So we had, for some reason, my mom was driving, and, and my brothers and I were in the back seat, and, and I'm the littlest one, and I'm lying, I'm on the scene right behind my mom, and then we're sort of lined up, boom, boom, boom. The four boys lined up. And so I'm sitting on the door right behind my mom, and, um, and we're driving down the road from Pipestone to Jasper, probably at about 120 miles an hour, and I start messing with the car door. And I'm only three years old, but I'm really obviously very strong. So eventually, I pulled up on that thing enough so the door opened just a little bit, okay? And, and, and then the wind caught it. And the door flew open, and, and I tried to hang on to it. And so the door pulls me out of the car, throws me onto the highway, and I end up in the ditch on the other side of the road. Now, I'm just three years old, and, and people who study these things say that our ability to remember things sort of goes in line with our ability to, to, to talk. I mean, until, we, until we're able to verbalize, we don't remember. So I don't know if I remember this because I was exceptionally bright, except when it comes to some things. And, um, and I was speaking at three years old, or this is just part of family lore. I don't know. But I remember falling out of that car, bouncing across the highway, ending up in the ditch on the other side, looking at that black, ugly, June bug mercury going down the road with one door still open, and, and, and hearing my mom say, if you ever fall out of the car, she's not coming back. We're done. I did a bad thing, and this is what happens. In August, we, um, we have two daughters, as I said. Uh, one of them uh, lives in the Twin Cities, and the other one lives in, uh, outside of Portland, Oregon. And, and so one of the things we, we told our kids is we... We're going to try to do some really good vacations together as a family, and mom and dad are going to pay for all of them because, not because we're generous, but we're simply spending our children's inheritance. <laughs> and so this year we, we, we rented a gorgeous uh, vacation home on the Oregon coast. Fucking gorgeous. You know? So we got my wife and I and our oldest daughter and her husband 
And their two kids, who are um, 11 and, and 7, and our daughter from the Twin Cities and her husband, and they have no children, they have two cats, which we said we're not welcome <laughs> to come. So, and it was fascinating because we're, we're with our family, and our family's fairly functional. You know, on a scale of one to 10, it's maybe a seven. Um, but I don't know about you, but when you get your whole families together, for some reason my blood pressure goes up and my pulse increases, and if I were ever to drink, I'd be drinking more than I normally would. <laughs> God, families are messy. And, and they're hard. And, you know, and it's amazing how my, my two children, one's 40 and the other one is, is, is 34. But when you get them in the same room, they act the same way they did when one of them was 11 and one of them was 5. And the little one gets so mad at her big sister because her big sister bosses her around. So I, I just go for a walk on the beach, which is, I'm sure, what God does sometimes when he watches us. But, you know, for some reason, we don't need to be reminded that we're not perfect. And that is our confession says we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But we do need to be reminded that we're still loved. And we can love those whom God has given us to love. That's the beauty of being a follower of Jesus is forgiveness awaits us and surprises us when we least expect it and we least deserve it. And we're capable of being forgiven and forgiving others in powerful ways. As I said, I was the youngest of four boys. Um, my dad went to college, my mom graduated from high school, which at the, her time was a big deal because less than half the women in this country graduated from high school back in the 1930s. So education was very important to my family, and my three older brothers all went to college. And so uh, I graduated from high school, what do you do? Go to college. And um, I, my, my dad went to St. Olaf, my two oldest brothers went to St. Olaf, the, the third one was the black sheep. I think he sort of liked, we used to accuse him of pushing me out of that car door, but he went to the University of Wisconsin, you know. And then it was my turn, and I'm the youngest, and I'm compliant, so I go to St. Olaf College. And the um, first year was, was okay, but I went to a little high school where I was like one of the smartest kids in the class, and then I go to this college, and, and I'm one of the dumbest kids in the class. And, um, but I did okay, and then first semester, second year, year, I did okay, and then the second semester of sophomore year, I, I discovered a very, very dangerous formula. Um, girls and beer. <laughs> and, and the two are not, they're not a good mix. Sorry, girls, but it's got nothing to do with you, it's just, so, you know, and, and I wasn't even good some of the time, second semester of sophomore year. And one of the things I was not good at was, was going to class and studying. I just, it was just like I, I fell out of the car and I was laying in the ditch for about four months. <laughs> and um, so second semester is over. And now this was back in the good old days where you, your, your grades were actually sent to the people who were paying for your education. What's that with college today? Your grades get sent to the kids. That's just stupid. I'm sorry. So I left to go out to, to this little camp in, in southwestern North Dakota where I was a Bible camp counselor. I'd done it the summer before. Loved it. So I'm out in North Dakota, and I know that two things are going to happen. One is my mom and dad are going to get this letter. 
from St. Olaf College, and number two, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be ugly. I don't know how ugly, but it's going to be ugly. And what I don't know is what's going to happen after that. So uh, this was a little Bible camp, and we had, so you, you, those of you who are younger, you got to remember this. Uh, we had two telephones, the whole, the whole place. No cell phones, no nothing, just two telephones. One was in the director's cabin, and the other one was in the, 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 where they stored the food off the kitchen. And I could go an entire three months and never get a phone call. Right? These were wonderful days. These phones just didn't ring. But I knew that summer that phone was going to ring. And um, so one day I was out with the kids and just doing what we're doing. It was middle of the morning. And uh, one, of the, one of the young women that worked in the kitchen uh, was walking across the, 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 the field where we were at, and, and she's walking towards me, and I'm, I, I don't want her to be, I want her to turn around and go the other way, because I, know, I, I just know what's coming. And she comes out, and she goes, Rick, you got a phone call. So I walk from there to the, to the dining hall, into the kitchen and into that little room and there's uh, this, this big black phone where the receiver weighs about 10 pounds. And, and I lift that thing up and, um, and I put it to my ear and I go, hello? And the voice on the other end says, hi, it's your mom. Hi, mom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Well, your dad and I just want you to know that we love you and hope you have a good summer. Talk to you later. Bye. That's called grace. I did not deserve it. I did not earn it. But it changed my life. Last two years of college, I got straight A's. We're only good some of the time, and the people who we live with and who we deal with are only good some of the time. But God is good all the time. And God always knows what to say and what to give to us when we least deserve it. Be gracious with one another because God is always gracious with you. Amen. We sing together, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds.
whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Holy and loving God, through the, Christ, or through the cross of Christ, continue your redeeming and unifying work among your people. Show us how to live well with each other as one family. Help us to point to the cross of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, you desire for us not to be alone and to be with one another. Strengthen relationships between nations and peoples that we may celebrate and support one another. Lord, in your mercy, walk faithfully with those who find great joy in relationships and with those who experience the pain of broken relationships. Make the church a place where all people may come to find forgiveness and a relationship with you. Lord, in your mercy, lift up your children who are bent and broken in times of crisis or long periods of suffering. We especially pray for Jane, Diane, Floyd, Brian, Cindy, Marlo, Marguerite, Barb, Joanne, Marion, Tom, Melissa, and all those we name before you. By your presence, bring them hope by speaking words of healing and restore them to wholeness, that praise may flow from their lips. Lord, in your mercy, you promise eternal life to all your children. Thank you for the saints in our lives whom you revealed your love for the world. Continue to reveal your covenant through life, <clears throat> your covenant life through us until the last day. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And the peace of Christ be with you always. Take a moment of time to share that peace with their neighbors around you. Responding now to God's everlasting generosity, we receive the offering. You may be seated. We sing together, everybody's got something to offer.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, full of your glory, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those who all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Please be seated. The table is ready. on us, Lamb of God, you 
take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace, grant us peace, Lamb of God. We sing together. <clears throat> As we drink this cup, we worship you. As we eat bread, we honor you. And we offer you our lives as you. We remember all you've done for us. We remember your covenant. 
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So shout out to David and Aline Cruz for our chasm broadcast today. Thank you so very much. Um, coming up is the installation of the Reverend D. Peterson as Bishop of our Southwest Minnesota Synod. It is on October 9th, which is this coming Saturday at 2 p.m. All are welcome. Um, children are invited to participate in the procession. Um, and our very own Nira Brown, um, she's on the LYO board, the Lutheran Youth Organization board. She is actually going to be um, an acolyte in the service. So it's going to be really cool um, if you can attend. Um, next week is bible sunday so for our third graders and our brand new preschoolers they will be receiving their bibles um and for anyone who doesn't have a bible let me know we have some i would love to get the word in your hands and coming up soon is a galatians bible study with pastor anthony and it's starting next week and it goes for three weeks um during that um Sunday school hour, I guess, but the hour between services starting at 9.15. And back by popular demand, youth pizza time. So if you are interested in getting one of our um, pizzas that the youth are making for their fundraiser, we are starting to sell them today. Um, there is a table in the lobby. I'm not sure if any of our friends will be there, but if you have questions about filling out the order form and who to give it to, um, I'll be around and then look for anybody who looks younger so they kind of know what's going on um pizza making day is november 13th all hands are welcome to help on those days do we have another slide or are we, are we good we're good awesome thank you please stand the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine on you with grace and mercy the lord look upon you with favor and give you peace
Christ.